Hi, and welcome to Beat Diabetes. On today's program, we will hear from a man who brought his glucose from the 300s down to around 120 in a week's time. How in the world did he do that? And we'll look at the two ways, that's right, two ways you can look at high glucose readings on your glucometer. If you look at it one way, it will lead to your ruin. But if you look at it the other way, it will lead to victory. Here's a man who watched the video I made, which is fairly popular, called, If I Had Sky High Blood Sugar, What Would I Do? And the reason I put it in those terms is, I never did have sky high blood sugar. I had all kinds of blood sugar problems, but it never really reached the point where I was an A1C of 8, 9, 10, 12, 14. It never got there. So I... That's one thing I don't have in common with some of you. I've never had it that high, but I was headed that direction, I know. Anyway, I made a, a, a video called, If I Did Have Sky High Blood Sugar, What Would I Do? And I basically listed things I do anyway, but I wanted to make the point that if you've just been diagnosed way high, and by the way, we'll put a link to that uh, video in the, com in the uh, description. If you've been do diagnosed with really severe diabetes, uh, you need to watch that video for sure. Anyway, this guy did. He watched the video. He said, if I had watched the video just a few years ago, I would have said you were crazy and extreme. Well, that's me, crazy and extreme. <laughs> Some people might think so anyway. He says, but after several cycles of taking my meds, my glucose getting out of control, the doctor upping my medication, giving me more meds, and then... Repeat the cycle, taking more meds, glucose going out of control, getting more meds, repeat, repeat. He said, I've had enough. I'm not yet on insulin, but I am on my way toward insulin. He says, last week, now this is not a guy that's really beat diabetes. Normally, I like to share testimonies of people that have beat it, but his attitude is so positive and so good, and he really gets it that I thought it's worth sharing, even though... As I said, he hasn't really beat it yet. He says, last week I checked my glucose. It was 340 upon waking. He says, I hadn't bothered to even check my sugar once in months. Life and work were stressful. I wasn't being as careful with carbs as I should. A few Pop-Tarts are okay, right? He says, my reaction to this time was exactly what you described. I cut it all out. Cold turkey, bread, cereal, sweets, rice, potatoes. I went to the doctor. My A1C was just over 10, but in just over a week. So this is just a week ago. My sugar today was 120 before dinner. So like I said, he hadn't totally beat it. But boy, I tell you what, 120 is a whole lot better than uh, 340. So he's cut it way down in one week's time. Will everybody get that fast of results? No, but he sure did, and a lot of people do. He says, I realize now, especially watching your videos, this has to be a lifetime change, and that's worth repeating. Let me say it nice and slow, or as George Bush once said, read my lips. <laughs> this has to be a lifetime change, but I'm telling the truth. Bush apparently wasn't when he talked about taxes, but that's another story. This has to be, this has to be, let me say it again. This has to be a lifetime change, or you could say a lifestyle. It has to be. This is not a, a fad diet. This is not, well, I'll do things a little differently for a while, get it down, and I'll go back. No, you won't. Or if you do, you'll go right back to all the problems you had. He says, I cannot just ignore my diabetes. No, you cannot. The funny thing is, it wasn't that hard. Now, this sounds like a guy who's a veteran and has really gone for years in this but he's just gone for a week, but he says it wasn't that hard. After one week, my cravings are gone. I'm eating only between 12 noon and 8 p.m., so an eight-hour window. I'm not hungry. Thank you so much for what you do. My doctor was encouraging, but I could tell he didn't think it would. I would make a lasting change. I was even asking myself, am I going, am I going too extreme here? But then I found your video. Now I'm convinced this is what I have to do. I found this video right when I needed it. I love that. And I think God has something to do with that. And I've heard lots of people say things like, I found your channel or I found a particular video right when I really needed it. And uh, thank God for that. He says, keep up the great work, Dennis. 
Well, with his attitude, he's going to make it. And it feels so good when those numbers come down and you realize it has worked. I'm no longer a diabetic by the numbers. Whether you want to argue about the fact that I have diabetic tendency or you want to still call me diabetic, call me whatever you like, but my numbers are not diabetic. And if I've got an A1C in the fives and I've got uh, fasting glucose under 100, uh, I'm doing pretty well. And the storm is over. Diabetes is like a storm. Your doctor tells you with a grave face and a somber voice, uh, sir or ma'am, uh, you have severe diabetes. We need to get you some meds soon, and you may, you're may you probably going to need to take insulin. It's like a storm that descends upon your life. And in Texas, we have, uh, at least where I live in Texas, we have tornado season. And we have usually once or twice every year, we have a tornado a gr- or a group of tornadoes that come our way. And Benedict and I are usually watching TV at that time, and there's a guy on there, and he'll talk almost nonstop along with some others for a couple of hours as he just starts reporting where the tornado is hitting and where the the uh, the twisters are and what areas they'll be at next. And we're just watching and praying and hoping that it will pass by us. And it's kind of a scary time. I remember... When Benedicta first moved in, uh, came to America and joined me as my wife, we lived in a second story, a second floor apartment. And the first time that that came, she said, they were saying, get to a safe place. She said, where's a safe place? I said, sweetie, there is no safe place. Uh, we're on a second story. If if a tornado hits and destroys this building, we'll just crash down to the first story. That's about all there is. It wouldn't matter where we went. But... And the point, I'm, the reason I'm saying this is usually the next day seems like it's sunny and there's hardly any wind. It, everything is calmed down. The storm is over. And to realize the storm missed us and our house is still intact and we don't need to call the people to put new shingles on our roof and uh, no broken windows. Everything is fine. The storm is over. The sun is out. There's hardly any wind. We made it through. That, my friend, is how it feels when you beat diabetes and the numbers come down and your doctor smiles at you and says, how in the world did you do this? And sometimes, a lot of times they'll say, well, I don't know about this keto thing, but whatever you're doing, it's working. Don't stop. Yeah, it works. And when that storm is over, it feels so, so good. Okay, this is a lady from Australia. She says, hi from South Australia. So not just Australia, but South Australia. I love your videos. I especially enjoy the ones including your lovely wife as you both are so funny together. Well, I enjoy having Benedict on as well. I'd have her on more, but it takes her a long time to get ready to do a video. And so sometimes I just don't have the time to wait. Uh, But anyway, it's always fun when she's on. This person says, I started low-carb high fat in December. I had an A1C of nine. Since then, I've dropped my A1C to 6.1 and then further to 5.7. The bonus is I've lost 12 kilograms and my husband has lost even more. I keep my focus by watching you and Dr. Fung's videos. I've never felt so empowered to reverse diabetes as I have since watching you both, despite being a nurse for 30 years. Nurse for 30 years, she's watching my videos and getting something out of it. Here's a guy that's never been to medical school, uh, probably knows a lot less about most things than she does, but she watches my videos and, of course, Dr. Fungs, who is a doctor. And has learned a lot, been helped a lot. And I like what she said. I've never felt so empowered. I thought I would look that up and give you a definition of to empower. It's a good word. It means having the knowledge, confidence, means, or ability to do things or make decisions for oneself. Having the power, the knowledge, the information put into your hands so that you can make decisions 
that will bring a blessing in your life and do things to free you from your situation. You know, there's two ways you can look at a glucometer that says you've got a glucose level of 350, which is terrible, in case you didn't know. But let's say you look at that glucometer with a big 350 on it. Your glucose is sky high. And there's two things you can say. One is, I'm done for. And sadly, that's what a lot of people say. And sadly, some of the medical advice they're given doesn't really give them much hope beyond that either. Well, diabetes is progressive. Diabetes is a chronic situation. It's going to stay with you. It's going to get worse. So really what they're saying is, translation, you are done for. Mr. or Mrs., you're done for. You're just one of the unlucky ones. So you can look at the 350 and say, I'm done for. Or you can look at the 350 and say, you know what? I can change this. Now, we Christians like to add, by the grace of God, I can change this because we believe God gives us the power, the motivation, and everything else. But I can change this. I don't have to accept this. Sometimes we use a phrase, this is unacceptable. High blood sugar is unacceptable, and you don't have to accept it. You can be empowered with a little bit of knowledge and information and a little bit of motivation to make serious changes in your life and drive those numbers down and drive back those complications that have been approaching, or maybe they've already arrived at your doorstep. You can be empowered. Watch good videos, read good books, ask God for help, make the changes you need to make, and make sure you understand this is a lifestyle and it's for a lifetime. You don't want to finish your race limping along, bleeding, messed up, worn out. You know, if you watch the marathon winners, they usually finish the race running almost as fast as they did at the beginning. They got up to a good pace and they just kept it up mile after mile after mile, hour after hour. And as they finish that race, they're moving along almost as fast as when they began. I think that's how we ought to be in our health and with our life. We all have to die sometime, of course. But how much better to just go and, if you're going to fall apart, do it in, in a few weeks' time and just pass on out of this life, rather than spend the last 15 years of your life falling apart and having constant doctor visits, hospital visits, and so forth. I can change this. Be empowered. Read what you need to read. Watch what you need to watch. Learn what you need to learn and make a difference in your own life. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.